Israel must have war gamed this many times. Uh, Iran, according to Israel, has used its proxies in the past uh, to target uh, Israel, whether it's the Hamas or the Hezbollah or the Houthi. This time, is uh, you know, Iran has done it directly. Why do you think, as someone who's been in the government, someone who's been in the parliament, someone who's been energy minister of this country and infrastructure minister of this country, uh, why do you think Iran got involved directly? Well, I think that the situation um, deteriorated from the point of view of Iran to the situation where they're basically the proxies are almost eliminated. If not eliminated, at least their ability to influence or attack Israel is shrinked or minimized. In this um, situation, when all that happened in a relatively very short time, especially with the Hezbollah, if Iran will not uh, react in any way, that will be a, a very strong uh, sign of weakness from the side of their supporters and their allies in the region. And also, uh, Iran is not only threatening Israel. In the first cycle, Iran threatens the Gulf countries, Saudi Arabia, all the more peaceful countries in the Middle East. Israel is the excuse of Iran to attack many other countries. You mentioned two of the proxies. The Houthis also suffered, but there are more in, in uh, West Iraq and in other places. Uh, this is why I think they had to act. And over the past eight days, I've been trying to get you a number of voices from within Israel, uh, from, from the police to the Israeli Defense Forces to their political leaders to former political leaders and even youngsters on ground. For example, I caught up with a group of youngsters, uh, young teenagers who are just about to join the Israeli Defense Forces. Now, it's mandatory for every Israeli citizen to serve in the armed forces or the police. It's two years for women. It's three years for men. I caught up with a young group uh, who, were, who were actually watching our show uh, while I was anchoring and they wanted to join in. Listen in. What, what do you want to tell your viewers in India? What's your name? Okay, so my name is Gali, and I want to say um, I'm very grateful. I'm very grateful for India being supportive of Israel and having our backs. Okay, tell me your name and tell me what do you do? My name is Noya, and what happened in October 7 it's terrible. They raped the women's and men's and killed babies. So it's terrible what happened and we need to end Hamas. Tell me what are your thoughts right now, you know, as your country fights Hamas and Hezbollah and of course the threat within your country. I think Israelis should stick together and the war is just the whole, I think the most horrible thing that's happened to us in like the past um, ten, 10 years and it just, it's horrifying to see how the hostages are still in Gaza, even though it's been one year since then. And I'm very, I'm very concerned about the Israeli soldiers. I want them to come back home safe and go back to their families. And I think Israel would win um, eventually and everything will be okay. Are these also your thoughts, especially at a time when Israel is battling Hamas in the south and Hezbollah in the north? We need to bring home all the hostages because they kidnap and we need to end Hamas, Hezbollah, all the terrorist organizations. We need to end them right now. I just also want to find out as, as youngsters, do you, do you get time to you know, go out and enjoy life or is it all about you, know, you may be enjoying a party and suddenly there's this air raid siren and rockets could be coming in? I think uh, even though we're continuing with our lives, even though, like, I lost an uncle in this war and it's very sad, but still I continue with my life in, like, I go to parties, I go with my friends out, I'm going to restaurants or just usual parties, and if, like, a siren attacks us, we're just going to the safe, um, we were on the bus thing. and uh, suddenly it was a, a siren, siren. yeah. And uh, we don't have a safe place, so we, we were went behind a uh, restroom, and we laid on, a, on the ground just to be safe. And we were very, sque we were very scared because we weren't at home, and it was in the middle of the street, and out of nowhere we were on a bus. It just we went outside and laid on the ground, and we stayed safe. But that hasn't, uh, you know. Life hasn't been impacted. You still live life to the fullest is the impression I get. In yes, Israel. but we're scared, like yeah. suddenly, sirens. I can say I've been in school since then and if, like every time I'm go I go to school, I have like a siren and it's very scary and stressful and when we just hear them, we 
start running outside to find a safe place and every time like it attacks us like every hour and it just it's so hard to keep living like that and I just want the world to uh, the world to end.